Hello brothers and sisters of Christ, I hope the lighting is okay, um, I'll redo it if I have to, but this is going to be a long study, okay, denying the lowercase w word slash capital W word. Why do I do this this way? We're going to do a study from the Bible, the King James Bible, God's perfect written word for English speaking people, and we're going to show you what happens when you start falling into the trap of denying God's word. What does it lead to? We're going to get into that. Turn to Titus chapter 1, verse 16. This verse hit me up, and I, I'm going to do a series. We're going to, we're going to start with Peter. Uh, I want to do Paul. I want to do Saul, King Saul. I want to do King David. Um, I want to go through the Bible and try to pick some guys out that best exemplifies what happens when you start denying the Word of God. What does it lead to? Okay. These are also great examples of different types of people that are seeking God. Different types of professing Christians. Okay. And there's signs to show that they're not true. So Titus 1.16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. I'll be doing another study on this verse, but this verse hit me, and God put on my heart to do this study first, but notice it says every good work reprobate. It's possible to do good works that bear no fruit, none whatsoever. Like I said, it's a whole other study that we'll get into on another day, but I noticed that part. But the biggest thing is, is they profess that they know God, and words, they say, I believe in Jesus Christ, and I follow Jesus Christ, and, and every... But in works, it's the opposite. They deny Jesus Christ with the life that they live, with the things that they do, the stands that they take, physically. Right? But in works, they deny Him. And any time they do a good work, it's unfruitful. It's reprobate. It's worthless. That's what reprobate means. Worthless. Okay? So before we get into Peter, we got to get into the whole thing about sign, singular. We'll talk about signs and wonders a little bit to touch on the definition. There's, we're going to separate the two. There's a sign, a specific sign, and then there's signs and wonders that were being done. So turn to Luke 2.21. And I'm going to turn into my Bible this whole study, which is going to make it probably be three hours, but we'll see how long it goes. Luke 2.21. Someone got on to me for not look, actually turning to the Bible and just reading off notes. So... They weren't being mean about it, but I'll show you why. Luke 2.21. It just takes me a long time to turn. Okay. We're going to read all the way down to 35. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angels before he was conceived in the womb. You have people coming out with studies saying it should be Emmanuel, it should be Emmanuel. This happened way, probably a year ago now. It should have been Emmanuel, and Joseph was in sin, and Mary was in sin for naming him Jesus. Right there is another verse to prove that uh, the angels told him to name him Jesus. Right. Verse 22. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they were still under the law. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Right? They're going to offer sacrifice for Jesus. <laughs> I know. Uh, 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he should see the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, another study there that I'm going to be doing about custom versus law, custom of the law, Okay. Verse 25. Then took he him up in his arms, and blessed God, and said, Lord, now lest thy, thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Wait a minute. 
He didn't say my salvation. He said thy salvation. Let's keep going here. Verse 31. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. It's God's salvation. God saved me. I didn't save myself. It's not my salvation. Verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Jesus is going to save the world. Verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again, death, burial, resurrection of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Notice the word sign there is singular. 35. Yea, a sword shall pierce through my own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The word of God, remember, it's, it's a sharper than any two-edged sword, double-edged sword, and knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. What's he speaking of? This sign that's spoken against. What is this sign that's spoken against? Okay. Turn to Matthew chapter 24, 24. It's not signs and wonders. It's a sign, singular, that's going to be spoken against. Matthew 24, 24. Now, I believe uh, Matthew 24 is directed to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Keep forgetting, with this book, with large lettering, it's like three pages per chapter. 24-24. Uh, but for context here. Okay. For there shall arise false Christ's and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, this, they shall deceive the very elect. The elect it's talking about here is the, I think it's 144,000, if I got the number correct, of Jews that are sealed by God in the time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, but notice what it says here, signs and wonders. So you have counterfeit Christ, fake Jesuses, Antichrist, Satan, that are doing signs and wonders. So is that sign singular talking about this? No, it's not. Turn to Mark 13, 22. But people will try to say it is. That's how a lot of them are deceived by these false Jesuses, these antichrists. But Mark 13, 22. We see it again. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders, plural, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect, to deceive. See, he's Jesus because he's got these signs, plural, and wonders, plural. But what did we read up there in Luke chapter 2? Sign, singular. Okay. Uh, John, turn to John 4, 48. Says, then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Here's the thing. Jesus was already doing signs and wonders. Uh, if you turn to Acts 2.43, the transition book, I'll just read it from here. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Remember, he sent the apostles out two by two and gave them authority to heal people and to cast out devils. Jesus was already doing signs and wonders. He was casting out devils. Okay, He was healing people. Arms were growing back. I mean, I can't even fathom seeing that. I mean, we have, I mean, you got your Hollywood movies, but I'm talking about being there personally sitting there, seeing Jesus put his hand on somebody that's missing an arm or a leg, and it grows back just like that. All their skin is white and decay and it's dying from leprosy, and their skin becomes healthy and clean and, and the color that's supposed to be, just like that. He was already doing signs and wonders and they didn't believe. So is the sign that the guy's talking about, the sign spoken against, is that what I, what I believe he's talking about, the signs and wonders? 
No. Um, turn to Exodus chapter 7. Just wanted to do an Old Testament part in this one. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 7. Starting in verse 10. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of the Egypt, magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. They always try to make out two rods. We don't know how many rods. It says, for every man their rod here. Might say somewhere else, but I always got to throw stuff in there. Um, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Okay? And you keep going down through the story and you go through all the plagues that were going on. Satan was able to copycat the miracles, if you want to say signs and wonders, that God was doing. But there came a point where Satan hit a wall, he couldn't copy it. Okay? Now, so what is this sign then? Let's get into the sign singular. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. And I've highlighted things on my notes, so I'm going to read from here. But 12... 37. I guess I read both sides. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. When you hide God's word in your heart, by thy word you shall be justified. When you take this, by thy word thou shalt be condemned. We did a study on this. Are you going to trust your heart, or are you going to trust the word of God? Right, it's the whole point here, by thy words. Does your words line up with the life that you're living? Someone can say their words line up with the word Bible, but if you say video games are, are wicked and sinful, and yet you turn around and get caught playing video games, by thy word thou shalt be condemned. Same thing with alcohol. Al be, being a drunkard's wrong, yet you go out and you get drunk all the time. You get high all the time. Well, I'm not a feminist, yes, I'm against feminism, but then you turn around and, and you act like a feminist. Okay? Movies, TV shows, video games, adultery, fornication, regardless. Oh, I, I, I believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, but there's no changed life. You live like the world, look like the world, act like the world. You're not looking for Jesus to come back any day now. You're lying. It can, your own words condemn you because your actions don't line up with your words. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a whole huge another study, but bottom line, by your words thou shalt be uh, justified. If you're hiding God's word in your heart, you're going to be justified. And when and evidence that you're hiding God's word in your heart, we've always talked about this, brothers and sisters of Christ, it's the life that you're living. It lines up with scripture. It's not just words, but your life lines up with it. Verse 38, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign, singular, from thee. As we get down here, what are they asking? They, are you, they, you hear the word Messiah, Christ. Okay, basically they're asking, are you the one? Are you God manifest in the flesh? The son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Someone says this, we're, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, they're wanting to know. They want a sign, singular, that defines, okay, Jesus is God. Okay. Manifest in the flesh. Verse 39, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign singular. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the bell whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay. What's this sign that's going on here that we're talking about? We read it in Luke 2.1. The guy's like, 
a sign spoken against. They're trying to say he's, he's just a regular man. In fact, they even tried to say he's a servant of Satan. Okay, Beelzebub. And by Beelzebub does he cast out demons. Okay. But what's this sign that's evil spoken of? They don't want to be submissive to Jesus Christ as God manifests in the flesh. They're king. Capital K king. Not a lowercase k king. A capital K king. A capital L, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Turn to Matthew 16.1. We'll see this again in 16.1. The Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And we can keep going. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, I will, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. They were coming to him asking for a sign singular that he is Christ. God manifests in the flesh. And he says, look at all these signs. He's fulfilling scripture after scripture after scripture from the Old Testament. And you still don't believe, but you want a specific sign? Okay. Turn to Mark. I see. Next, I said, I said, Jesus did many signs and wonders. He fulfilled scripture. Bethlehem. He was a na came out of a Nazarite. You know, all these times, it, for it is written, for it is written. He's fulfilling Old Testament prophecy, and they're ignoring him. And they want to see a sign, a specific one sign, that proves that he's God. He's the Christ, he's the Messiah, he is God manifest in the flesh, their capital K King. Okay. Uh, turn to Mark 14, 61. This is after they've got him. Turn to Mark 14. Verse 61. A lot of verses in here. Let's go start at 60. And, and the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answer thou nothing? What is which? What is? I'm oh, sorry. What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. It's Jesus Christ. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the cloud of heaven. And then the priests rent their clothes and say, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy, what think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. He said it, but he didn't show that sign yet. What is that sign? Well, Jesus said it, as Jonah was in the belly of the well three days. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the sign that proves that Jesus is God, manifest in the flesh. He overcame sin and death. Remember, he became sin who knew no sin. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned, God condemned sin in the flesh. Okay? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ prove that He is God manifest in the flesh. Now I could go over all the words, or all the verses again, showing how, um, but quickened by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus said, tear down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then in another passage it talks about God the Father raising Him up. You say it says God. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, there's only but one capital G, God, the Father. Okay? God raised him from the dead. The Godhead raised Jesus from the dead. He is God fully and completely. That's the sign. And it was important for us to get in that context. That's the sign that's spoken against even to today. Okay? That's not, you know, I could go into it, the easy believism. you got people who believe you can lose your salvation, the Catholic Church, all that junk. They deny this sign. Oh, I believe the gospel, I believe the gospel, but you won't repent. It's just head knowledge. It's never down here. Right? So now let's get to Peter. Turn to Titus, or 
We don't have to turn to Titus because we already talked about it. But Titus 1.16, to bring it back to what we're talking about here. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. I want to read that again because we're going to talk about Peter. Okay? Peter confirms who Jesus is, and then, and then he denies something. He denies his word. I'll go ahead and go through it. He denies his word, and what is his word? When he goes to deny his word, what does that lead to? It leads to him denying Jesus Christ himself. What happens when you deny the word of God? You wind up denying the very Jesus Christ that these words belong to. Okay, this is God's word. Okay, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Sixteen verse thirteen. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Man's words. Fourteen. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jer Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Those are what man's words are saying. Verse 15, And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Whom do you, ye, say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. If he was going off of man's words and the world, he would have said the same thing as those other people said it. But he followed Jesus Christ and he was listening to who Jesus was and said he was. And that's why he said it. And God showed it to him. Verse 18. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. And I say also unto thee thou, that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, The rock there is Jesus Christ. He just said who Jesus was. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, Christ, the Son of the living God, I shall build my church. People. Verse 19. And I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in, in heaven. Then charged his disciples that they should not tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Let's see how far we're going to go? 24. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that much that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. What's Jesus talking about here? The sign. That's what Jesus is talking about. Verse 22. Then Peter, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Wait a minute, Peter. You just said that Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now all of a sudden, when it comes to the sign that proves that he already said, we read it back where he, he's telling those Pharisees, the sign of Jonah, this is the proof that you're going to get that I'm God manifest in the flesh. I'm God fully and completely. I'm, the, I'm your king, everything. The Christ, the Messiah, it all. That one sign, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here's, here's Peter denying it. He's denying the words of Jesus Christ. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You see, at first when he said that thou art Christ, the Son of the living God, he was obeying and listening to the word of God. Jesus is there. God showed this to you and you listen to God. Now what he's saying is, is you're falling back in the trap of listening to men. And savor the things that be of men, not the things that be of God. 
24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You've got to deny yourself when it comes to this world, the ways of this world. Peter wasn't doing that. Peter thought he knew what was best, and he ignored and rejected the words of Jesus Christ when it came to the sign, the evidence that he is God manifest in the flesh. Now, here's a question. It says Peter, a lot of people say Peter is looking forward to the cross. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, we're not going to turn there, but it says, But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. People always say Peter was saved. Peter was saved at this time. Okay. Now, Peter conforms, confirms with his lips. We talked about this. I want to go over this before we get into, is, is Peter saved right now? Okay. Peter conform, confirms with his lips that Jesus is God because he's listening to God. Then he turns around and denies the sign that proves that Jesus is God, thinking he's doing Jesus a good service. He's denying the words of Jesus Christ. Okay. Why is he called Peter Satan? Because Satan denies the sign. Okay. Satan cannot counterfeit that sign. Death, burial, and raising himself from the dead three days later. You read in Revelation that how it talks about how the Antichrist is going to have a, a deadly wound in the head and he's going to pretend like he came back, but he never died. Three days, the corpse is there. Everybody says, yeah, he's dead. Three days, and he raises himself up. Satan can't do that. He loves to counterfeit God, but he can't do it. He hates the sign. He doesn't want people to repent and believe that sign in their hearts. They want man's word, Satan wants man's words in their hearts, not God's words. Mm -hmm. Satan's always about the, uh, the ways of the world and the flesh. And who do, who do we know that's like that? Well, pretty much every organized religion out there now, even the Baptists. It's about the flesh and it's about the world. Okay? It's not about conforming to the word of God, it's about conforming to the world. They start denying the word of God. But first, before we get into what's, what's, what happens when Peter denies the word of God, he denied it. We just read it. Be it far from me. This will not happen. Okay. But Matthew 10, 32. Let's get to the part where Jesus tells them what's going to happen. Okay. Matthew 10, 32. Because remember, we just read there that uh, people always say that Peter's looking forward to the cross. We read in 2 Corinthians, but if the gospel will be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Matthew 10, 32 says, Who, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. When you say, I believe in the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, it upsets the lost world, false converts, Satan upsets them. You're not going to have peace as far as with this world, where you fit in and you can just live in peace and harmony with this world. It's not going to happen. 37, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. What do we read about? Uh, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. And he says that after Peter denies the sign, he's going off the world, his flesh. He's not listening to the word of God, the words of God. He's speaking it to him, and he's denying the word of God. Oh, yeah. Okay. But people will say, well, Peter was saved. Peter was saved. Okay, let's check out this. Let's see if Peter was saved. Okay. And we're also going to find out what happens when one denies the word of God. Turn to Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. more. 
Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that the night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all his disciples. None of his disciples understood death, burial, and resurrection. He even mentioned resurrection. After I'm resurrected, but I'm risen again. Um, so what's going on here? He's saying, Peter, you're going to deny me. Oh, no, I won't. Well, why is Peter going to deny him? Because he denied the words of Jesus Christ before. He denied the sign. He denied the word of God. Hmm. Turn to Mark 14, 27. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, there it is again, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will I not. Well, ah, yet will, I, will not I. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in the night, in this night, before the cock crow twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. We come across people, brother and sister Christ, like this. They have this strong urge and desire for the Lord. I'm not going to do wrong by the Lord. I'm going to focus on the Lord. and I'm going to live the right life and everything. What can get you off track in a heartbeat? That can get you off in a heartbeat. All those, I'm vehemently, I'm vehemently. What does, Paul, what does Peter do? We're going to get to that. We still got to go to one more uh, talking about the same subject. Luke 22, 31. I believe the reason Peter denied Jesus Christ is because he denied the word. His word. Luke 22, 31. And it says here, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have thee, that he may sift you as wheat. Remember what Jesus called him. Get behind me, Satan, for thou sayest the things that be of men, and not the things that be of God. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to value the world, the ways of men, the traditions of men, the flesh, sin. He wants you to have all this stuff. He wants you to elevate everything you could possibly think of above the Word of God. Okay. Verse 32. But I pray for thee that, the, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art converted, he's not saved. At this point in time that Jesus has talked to him, he's saying he's not saved. When thou art converted, Okay, that's why we say false converts. We have a lot of people professing to be converted, truly saved, but you look at their life, they deny the Word of God. Well, they might not deny it here, it doesn't matter. They deny it at all. Same from all appearance of evil. Okay, when it talks about eternal security, when it talks about dispensational teaching, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ, instruction righteous. You deny God's word in any way, shape, or form, it's going to lead to you denying the real Jesus Christ. Once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. But we see here that he says, when you are converted, and then he says, strengthen thy brethren. We're going to look at, we're going to get to it when, when it's God talking about when he says, strengthen thy brethren. Verse 33, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, 
I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And I believe this goes all the way back to where we just read, where he denied. He said, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But then when Jesus says, here's the sign to prove that I am God manifest in the flesh, the Christ, the Messiah, your King, capital K King, the capital L Lord, he denied it. He denied Jesus' words. All right. Now, one thing here, we see that he talks about Peter. And I'll say it again. Did you know that Satan hath desired to have you, brethren, before you got saved? He wanted to keep do everything he could to keep you from getting saved. When he sees that somebody's getting saved, people say him specifically, he's got a third of the falling angels, okay? But he does everything he can to prevent people. He's got systems in place, all these false religions, easy believism, you know, all these organized religion to prevent people from getting saved, okay? Do you know that he desires to mess you up as a Christian? I had a, a brother bring to my attention that I don't bring this up enough, that he wants to mess you up and ruin your walk with the Lord, but he also wants to destroy your testimony so you'll be useless of the Lord. That's what Satan's trying to do. Once you get saved, he failed to prevent you from getting saved because he has no power and authority in it, but he can tempt you and try to keep you in the world. But he, once you get saved, he's going to try to destroy your testimony. Okay? Peter lost his testimony when he said, Be it far from me. That ain't going to happen. And Jesus looks at him and says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest the things that be of men, not the things that be of God. Okay. Revelations 3.8 Let me see something. Not Revelation 3, not yet. It's supposed to be at the end. I guess we can go over it now. I meant to put it at the very end as the last verse, but we'll do it real quick. Revelation 3, yet. I know thy works. Talking about time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, it's in Revelation, talking about the churches. Some people say it applies to today. Some people applies to churches in the time of Jacob's trouble. Church means called out assembly. It can refer to the body of Christ. It can refer to saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. But here's talking about, it can be either or, but listen to what it says. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Satan can't prevent anybody from getting saved. If you don't get saved, it's your fault. But boy, does he try to prevent you and, ple and, and uh, please your flesh and do whatever he can to keep you from choosing to get saved. Mm -hmm. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word... Notice that's first, and has not denied my name. That's second. Kept my word, and has not denied my name. So strengthen thy brethren. That gives you a little hint. What's it going to hit the strengthening thy brethren? How do we strengthen the brethren? Okay. Turn to Luke chapter 22, 54. Luke 22, 54. I guess you didn't have to turn, turn to it. It's right here. Luke 22, 54. Then, then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. This is after they take Jesus in. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down amongst them. But a certain amongst them... How, do you, how can we apply this today? You have people that, I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian, but when they get around a lot of these false Christians, they tend to start acting like them, looking like them, and trying to blend in with them. The world, they look like the world, act like the world, they think that you can become like the world to win the world. Peter sat down amongst them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. First time he denied Jesus Christ. What happened? He denied the word of God. What did it lead to? He denied Jesus Christ. Verse 58, And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Second time he denied him. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirm, saying, Of a truth this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. 
And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. Words. The words started rushing back in. The words he was denying. He remembered the words of the Lord. How he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. He denied the words of Jesus, and then he denied him again when he said, I don't, You said I'm going to deny you? You are wrong, Lord. You're a liar. I am not going to deny you. I'm going to stand firm. He denied God's word again. What did it lead to? Denying Jesus himself. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today, what does denying the word today do? We look at all these people who profess to be Bible believed. I don't care about, you know, evangelical, non denomination, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran. They're all lost, hell bound, on their way to hell. Okay? Because you, all those systems, it's about becoming one with the world and having harmony with the world, for the most part. At this point, I've yet to see one Baptist building that hasn't compromised in one way, shape, or form or another. They've turned their back and denied the Word of God. Okay? But even Bible believing people who profess to be Bible believing, God fearing men and women, you wind up denying the Word of God, you're going to wind up denying Jesus Christ to the world. The world's going to look at you and they're not going to see the Jesus Christ that you profess to believe in. And those of us that are saved, that are truly saved, they're going to look at us and see us as hypocrites when we start denying the Word of God and we start presenting a false Jesus to the world. Okay. Matthew 26, 74. I want to read these two, Marks 26, 74. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. I want to read that in because he began to curse and swear. He started acting like a lost person. That's the only way he could get them not to believe that he's with Jesus Christ. The, capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. Mark 14, 71, But he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. Okay. You have all these people out there that look like the world, act like the world, laugh at the world's jokes. They have no problem getting drunk, getting high, playing video games, movies, TV shows. Oh, they profess a good profession. They profess that they know God. But they look exactly like the world, and the world accepts them. Whether they want to believe in Jesus Christ or not, that person is a good person. That person's a good person. No, I don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, but that person's a good person. Remember those verses that talked about how the people uh, magnified them, but they said, I, I still, they, they kept their distance. I don't want anything to do with them, but they magnified them. All the signs and wonders that were being done in Acts, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. They magnified them, but they want nothing to do with God. But today you see people like, oh, he's a cool person. I love hanging out with him. He looks just like me, acts just like me, but he's a Christian, and I really don't want to be a Christian. That's what Peter did. What led to all this? I believe because he kept denying the words of Jesus Christ. What's denying this word going to lead to? Denying the real Jesus Christ. You can't get away from it. Now, if I can find the picture, I will and put it up here. But um, some of you guys know the picture. I think I found it on Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, his website. Um, it's a comic strip, and it shows two men looking at each other, and it says who's influencing who. And one's supposed to be a Christian, the other one's supposed to be the lost world, and they look exactly the same. Yeah, that's what's going on today. Why? If you actually look into it and you talk to these people, it will always come down to they deny the word of Jesus Christ. They might say, well, I accept the sign and I believe in the sign itself. But notice he also denied the words when Jesus said, uh, you're going to deny me. Oh, no, no, I ain't going to deny you. You're wrong. You're lying, Lord. You're just wrong. He denied the words of Jesus Christ. Every time when you see someone that you start going, oh, I don't know if that person's saved or not. I just... I'm trying to compare scripture with what they're saying. That's why we always say, have your Bible open. That's why we always say, compare scripture with scripture. 
follow along in the Bible, make sure I'm telling the truth, and when you ask, what do you think of this person, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, is, does what they say line up with Scripture? It's not about what I say. Does what they say line up with Scripture? Okay? If not, they're going to end up denying, if they don't already do, the real capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Peter in here kind of reminds me of someone who's kind of seeking, you know, he's shifting through this world seeking Jesus, but has not quite found him yet. Yes, God showed him and he said, I'm trying to apply it to a, uh, you see people today. I was kind of religious and was interested in God and I called myself a Christian, but I was a false convert most of my life. And there's so many people out there that have testimonies where I was kind of seeking God off and on here and there. And the world just kept getting in the way and I started falling back into the world. And then I started getting interested in, in the truth and who God was and then the world gets in the way. And it's like, that's what I get the feeling from Peter. He wants to find Jesus Christ, and he's told, okay, thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. But then the next moment, the world gets in the way, the flesh gets in the way, and he ends up denying who Jesus is. The death, burial, and resurrection, the sign that proves that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Okay? There's a lot of excitement there. He's excited. That's why I'll be far from thee. That's not going to happen. He's excited like he's doing something for the Lord. But there's too much flesh in the way, in the world, and the ways of men. And eventually, you got to get that out of your out of your life. You got to come to God broken. What did, what did uh, Peter do after he denied Jesus thrice? He went out and whipped, wept bitterly. He just, I can't believe he he was right. The Lord was right. His word was right. I never should have den denied God's word. He's right. Okay. Now turn to John twenty one two. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two of the other of his disciples. Sorry about that. Car's coming by. No. Tori's going crazy. Stay. Simon Peter, verse 3. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But his disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the nets on the right side of the ship, and they shall find, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of the fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, John, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he denied him again. Well, I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, God will forgive me. Ah, oh, it's not Jesus. Ah, oh, it's not Jesus. No, what does Peter do? He girded his fisherman's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. There was a change about him. It's Jesus Christ. I ain't going to deny him again. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Part of me read that, I was like, could that be the, uh, you know, when it talks about being fishers of men, there's going to come a time where Jesus is going to be like, okay, he's done with this world, enough is enough, this whole side thing, enough is enough. Okay, brethren, bring in the fish which ye have caught, let's go, it's time to come up. Verse 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Okay? Fishers of men, when you truly get saved, that net will never break. Just something to think about. Fishers of men, when he says that, had all these fish in it, yet the net wasn't broken. Okay? 
You cannot lose your God's salvation. Remember, it's not your salvation. It's thy salvation, Lord. It's His salvation. He's the one that does the saving. Okay, you cannot lose the salvation that God bestows upon you. Verse 12. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine, and none of the disciples just ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. Now, this is now the third time and Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. The sign has been fulfilled. He's risen from the dead. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. It's the first time he said it. He saith to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17, He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things that thou, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. He was grieved. A lot of people will grab this and say it has to do with him denying Jesus three times. I think that took a part where it grieved him. But remember what Jesus said when he said, When thou art converted... Luke 22, 33, it says, And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What's really going on here, I believe? Peter ended up denying the word of God. And in denying the word of God, he ended up denying Jesus Christ himself. And what's Jesus trying to tell him? Because you did that, make sure no one else does. Strengthen the brethren. Feed the sheep. Okay? Acts 20, 28. We talk about this all the time. Uh, you, you can turn there if you want to. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and, o and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For and I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. We're to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. You feed them with the word of God. We talk about milk. We talk about meat. We talk about thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay? His word needs to be here. Okay? This, you need to not deny this. And he's saying, Peter, you're going to make sure that people aren't denying my word. You denied my word. And it, and it, and it cost you. Denying my word got you to die, deny his name three times. If I can get the words out. Got him to deny the name three times. Okay? People always grab this and say, well, it's just Jesus is poking fun at Peter. He's not poking fun. He's making a point and driving it home. You denied my word, and then it, it led to you denying my name three times. Strengthen the brethren. How do you strengthen them? By the word of God. How do you feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood? By preaching the truth, which is God's word. You stand by it. You confirm it. You live by it. You stand by it. This is God's word. I'm not going to deny it. What happens when you deny the word? Ask Peter. He'll tell you what happens when you deny the word of God. It won't be till the catching away of the body of Christ, but I'm just saying and reading the Bible. What happened to Peter? Right. Verse 30, but it says right here, let's go back to 29. In Acts 20, 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. We already talked about it. They can counterfeit the signs and wonders. You have people that verbally profess Jesus Christ, but in works they deny Him. But you got all these people coming in as wolves in sheep's clothing. They're, I'm a Bible believer. I'm a Bible believer. Eventually the truth comes out. But they've always, almost every time, when someone really gets in there and people start compromising... They don't hold to the Word of God. They compromise and say, well, I guess I can ignore it. There's no such thing as ignore it. You either affirm it or you deny it. They end up denying the Word of God. 
well, you know, that sin they're doing, it says it's wrong, and I'm supposed to correct them, and then if they won't give it up, and they keep justifying it, I'm supposed to break fellowship with them, but I'm going to deny the Word of God and just continue fellowshipping with them and everything. What's that going to do? It's going to destroy your walk with the Lord, and you're going to realize that you're, going to, you're denying the Lord because you're not talking to Him as often. You're not making as big stands like you used to make. You can tell people who are false because they turn, they, do, they turn and do a 180 and they go over to the enemy's side. They start preaching a false Jesus. Verse 30, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn you night and day with tears. That warning I believe that Paul's given night and day with tears is don't turn your back on the book. Don't deny the word of God. Strengthen one another. Stick to, like he told Peter, feed the church of God with he purchased with his own blood. Don't deny this. It'll lead to you denying Jesus Christ. You'll end up turning your back on. Your life will not reflect a life of Christ. What did Peter have to do to de deceive those people into believing he never knew Jesus Christ? He had to re stop acting like someone who knew Jesus Christ and had been with Jesus Christ, and he had to start acting like the lost world. And that's what happens. Brothers and sisters of Christ, how many of you have fallen away in your walk with the Lord when you're newly saved, even in, as a mature Christian? You fall away from the Lord, you stop reading the Word, you start falling into sin. How you start, your relationship with the Lord just falls apart. You start denying the Word of God with your actions and how you live your life. You don't represent, you don't shine, Jesus isn't shining through you anymore. He's there, but you're not showing Jesus to the world. You're showing your flesh to the world. And that's all the world sees. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. I'm not perfect, brothers and sisters of Christ. I make mistakes. Please bear with me. Correct me through Scripture, absolutely. But bear with me. I'm going to make mistakes. And I want, I want to be corrected, and I want to do what's right. Verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. What do I mean by bear with me? There, I've, I always link the gospel message. When someone is like, eh, I don't know if they're saved or not, err on the side of the caution, he's doing, there's some red flags here, I link the gospel message. And here's the thing, brothers and sisters of Christ, almost, and it, there's times where people go, amen, that's, the, that's the, what I got saved off of, and then you start talking to them about some of the, like the videos they have on their channel, some of the things they're justifying and everything, and they're like, oh, well... Yeah, you're right, the Lord does say that. Yeah, I do got to clean up my channel. And then you start realizing, hey, you know, I sent the gospel message, but this person might be saved. But most of the time when I send the gospel message, people get upset and they flip out. Ones who claim to be Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women, I send the gospel, I link the gospel message to them because there's some red flags. They might be saved, they might not be saved. They flip out. And you see anger, you see hate, you see bitterness, you see the flesh. And you're like, oh, I guess I've kind of hit the nail on the head with that one, with the gospel. And I say, it could bear with me. For I have jealousy over you with godly jealousy. I want people to be saved. I want to make sure people are saved. Okay? I don't want people to go to hell. Neither does uh, Paul here. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear but lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. How did the serpent beguile Eve? Yea, hath God said, getting them to doubt the word of God and getting her to deny the word of God. Right. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And after God saves you, He will change your life. He comes in and says, get that out of there, get that out of there. You're supposed to be doing this, you're not supposed to be doing that. What is so complicated about that? It's not complicated at all. But what gets in the way? 
people denying the word of God. The flesh, remember what he told Peter, thou savest the things that be of men and not the things that be of God. God's word, he elevates his word above his name. Back in the Old Testament, I think it's in Psalms or Proverbs. Right. Verse 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, we sit here and we tell him, Hey, here's the true gospel, here's the real Jesus, the capital Lord Jesus Christ, who is come in the flesh, the Godhead's absolute truth, the Trinity is a fake Jesus, is a, is a counterfeit by Satan, okay? People who tell you you can lose your salvation in this dispensation, what we call the, from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. If someone tells you you can lose your salvation, but they, pre they preach to Jesus, they're denying the real Jesus of Scripture. Why? Because they deny the Word of God. I am sealed until the day of redemption. And we can go through all this stuff, okay? What are they doing? They're promoting another Jesus. And when you come to them preaching the real Jesus Christ, because they deny the Word and words, of God, they're going to wind up denying the capital W word, Jesus Christ, the capital Lord, Jesus Christ. Or if you receive another spirit. There's times I think some people you see online are de demon-possessed. You know, they're, they're coming from another spirit. They don't have that Holy Spirit in them, because if they had the Holy Spirit in them, they wouldn't be denying the word of God. They might say, I don't get it, I don't understand yet, God hasn't shown this to me yet, but they won't sit there and flat out denying the word of God. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Hollywood movies, TV shows, uh, video games, and secular style music, and anime. There's nothing wrong. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Vain imagination. The imagination of your heart is supposed to be on the Lord. Anything that elevates the Lord. Oh, no, that's, not, that's, a, that's a different spirit there. That they justify sin. That's a complete, oh, drunkenness, there's nothing wrong with getting drunk. The Bible says it's okay to drink wine. It says you can't, it's, it's a sin to get drunk, but they won't say the Bible says it's okay to get drunk. They'll say the Bible says it's okay to drink wine. I'm telling you this right now. You're an alcoholic. You can't have a glass of wine. Those are for people that aren't alcoholics. You're a drug addict. You get that out of your life. Okay. It's that simple. And you can only do it through Jesus Christ. Which ye have not received, which we, should I say, another, if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Talk about going to hell and burning with, and tossing the lake of fire and burning for all eternity with Satan. If you continue, these lost people out there continue to deny God's word. They're going to continue denying who Jesus Christ is, the real Jesus Christ, and they're going to wind up in hell and, and the, tossed into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. Okay? And we read that time and again with Peter. He wasn't saved, looking forward to the cross. He said, when thou art converted, he was lost. The gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. We preach the true plan of salvation. Here's the gospel. That gospel doesn't mean nothing to you if you skip repentance, and you have all these people saying, I don't have to repent, but I believe the gospel and everything. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1, 2, and 3, verse 2 talks about how unless ye have believed in vain. He's talking to the Corinthians, who are the most carnal people out there, and he keeps doubting their salvation. If a man be called a brother, check whether ye be in the faith, time and time again, doubting their salvation. Why? Because they skipped repentance and they go straight to belief and they deny the words of God and they look like the world and act like the world and they call themselves Christians and Paul's saying uh, no you're not where's the repentance where's the fruits meet for repentance how are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein and you got all these people no oh, no I don't need repentance I don't need repentance what happens? They end up denying the real Jesus Christ for a fake counterfeit. I forgot I went backwards.
Now, sorry about that. When, when the wolves, servants of Satan, false converts, get you to deny the word of God, they get you to deny the capital W, they get you to deny the lowercase w word, they get you to set a bad example so you're not reflecting the capital W word of God. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters of Christ, that are saved. They're going to try to get you to deny anything in this book, even something so simple as abstain from all appearance of evil. Well, no, they get you to try to say that, yeah, you believe you should abstain from all appearance of evil, but in action, they go with the Bible perversions where it says certain kinds of evil. So you can be as God's knowing good and evil and decide what's right and wrong, despite what God's Word says. You get to be the one that says what's right and what's wrong. And they're going to try to get you to do it, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we see so many people that I believe are saved are falling away. And so many false converts are more and more and more coming to light. They're false. Look at the, the world. Look at their channel. They're all hiding their channels now. You know, like snakes. You look at their channel, you can't see who they're subscribed to, all the videos they've uploaded. Uh, they don't have an about page. No, it's just, just blank. Everything's blank. You can, they hide everything. But you look at their life and the life that they're living, you have so many people that you go, wait a second, you're not lining up with Scripture. You're denying the Word of God. And when I tell you this, hey, you're supposed to be living this way as a saved sinner because Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins according to you. I'm talking to the lost. I should be talking to the lost. But they need to get saved according to them. And yet their life reflects that they have no problem with sin. They don't have a problem with it. They don't have a problem with the ways of the world, the things that be of men. They have no problem with it. How many of you are falling in the trap of adding to God's word? I've been having to catch myself. I've had brethren correct me. I used to say falling into sin. Uh, that's not in Scripture. You can fall into temptation, but when you sin, it's your choice. You're doing it. You owe. You need to come to God broken and repent of that sin and take responsibility for that sin. And so many people are hiding from it. Oh, no, God will just forgive me because you know God is love. God is love. And when they stand before Him at the great white throne judgment, uh, they won't be scrouting... <laughs> Oh, but, but God is love, but God is love. No, they won't. They'll be on their knees in fear, which is how we're supposed to be today. If you're falling into sin and temptation, if you're adding to God's word, there should be fear in you. You should be fearing God. How many of us are making those mistakes? I used to say uh, rapture. I no longer say rapture. How many of you still say rapture? Chapter and verse. Rapture means taken by violence with force. That's the, the definition, Webster's 1828 Dictionary of Rapture. Taken, with violent, taken by violence with force. Is that what's going to happen at the catching away of the body of Christ? No, we're going to trip. It's like the body of Christ is tripping and we're going to fall on something. And God goes, no, you're not going to fall on that. And he catches us and brings us up. It's a glorious thing. Are you still using uh, rapture versus catching away? Are you still saying Trinity versus Godhead? Okay. Are you still celebrating pagan holidays and trying to make them Christian when there's no basis for it in Scripture? Okay. Are you still adding to God's Word? Are you taking away from God's Word? Do you find yourself being deceived into taking away God's word. Still your choice. I'm trying to warn you, brothers and sisters, but you have people up there that make it can be so sly and so tricky, double tongue, you know, to try to deceive you into taking away from God's word. Oh, that verse over there, that isn't really not that important. It's not that important. You can just ignore it. Uh, no, I'm not going to ignore it. Okay? Every word of God is pure. Okay? Tried in the fire seven times. Every word of God is pure. I'm not ignoring any of it. Okay. Here's a good one. How many of you have fallen in the trap where they try to get you to go to the Greek and the Hebrew? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a King James Bible believer, but the Hebrew word for this is such and such, and it could be translated this. That. How many of you guys have fallen into that trap? I mean, you even listening to people who say that. The moment someone says that, man, gone. You're trying to correct the Word of God. You're not a Bible believer. Now, I'm not against someone saying, hey, the Greek word is this, and the King James Bible uh, translates it correctly, 
and this is what the world gets messed up. They take this world word and they use it here, here, and here, here, and all throughout the world. There's nothing wrong with using Greek and Hebrew. I'm talking about using Greek and Hebrew to correct the King James Bible. Saying that we shouldn't really be following the English, that's our language that we should know and understand. We have to go to a dead language which we don't understand. And of course, ignoring it altogether. These Babel buildings, these organized religions that try to say they have the Bible, most of them use Bible versions, but even some of them that claim that they use the King James Bible, they get you to ignore it. The Mormon religion, the Mormon book, the Pearl of Great Price, there's four of them. You the, they try to use the King James Bible, but they've got the Mormon book, the Pearl of Great Price, or Wisdom, or something like that, and they've got a fourth book. And those three books that they've added to the Word of God trump the King James Bible and they basically when someone gets high enough they tell them ignore the King James Bible just follow the other three they claim to use it but they get told to ignore it in the end they get told to deny the word of the Lord now I have I'm sorry, I, just, I get frustrated, brothers and sisters of Christ, because we are in the last days, and I see so many people falling away. They're denying the Word of God, and they come with the attitude like Peter had, where they're like, I'm such a man of God, and I'm doing all this, and, and I love the Lord. And, uh, be far from me, Lord. I'm, I, I'm willing to die for you, and I'm willing to you know, go to prison and die for you. And then we hit them up. What you're doing there is sin. Get it out of your life. And they turn their back on God in a heartbeat. Oh, what you're doing over there, you're not supposed to be doing that. Hey, you're supposed to be doing this. Are you doing this, according to Scripture? Uh, you know what? You're starting to kind of steer off and starting to promote a different Jesus, and that's found in the King James Bible. You need to come back to the real Jesus Christ and not say the things that be of, the, of men, but things that be of God. And you tell these people that you love and you care about, and they turn their back on you in a heartbeat. Just in a heartbeat, start stabbing you in the back. And all you see from them is ha anger, hatred, bitterness, false converts. Every last one of them, false converts. Very few people have I ever linked the gospel message to have they not flipped out on me and gotten upset with me. They said, Amen, that's the gospel I got saved off of, and God's still working on me. Most of the time I link the gospel messages because there's a lot of red flags. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, they seem very fleshly. They could be newly saved, but they seem very fleshly, and they have an attitude when you try to correct them on their sin and whatnot. And they, they're following people that are false. They teach false gospels. I mean, I, I just don't understand that, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm kind of going off on a tangent. I don't understand how people can sit there and go, Praise the Lord. Amen, Brother Brian. Praise the Lord. Amen, Brother Philip. We preach, and then they go over to uh, Robert Breaker. Amen. Praise the Lord, Robert Breaker. He teaches a different gospel than I do. King's Road teaches a different gospel than the King James Bible. The different plan of salvation. The gospel seems to be the same, and I think that's what's confusing people. I'm trying to say the plan of salvation because that's what the Bible says. To salvation. To salvation. Repentance towards, uh, for godly sorrow worketh repentance. To salvation. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but confession is made unto salvation. The plan of salvation. Salvation is God's grace. God saving man by His grace. You want to find that grace? You have to go through things to get, through faith, to get to that God's grace. For by grace are you saved. So the plan of salvation, they teach a different plan of salvation. Their way of getting to God's grace is just simply believing, and you've earned it with your belief, and you can just take God's grace. And yet they'll come to my channel and say, Amen, Brother Philip. And then it's like, but you're saying Amen to them over there. And then this third, they see that it just gets even crazier, Brother and Sister of Christ. You watch all the videos they're linked to. They link to so many videos that there's five or six different versions of the plan of salvation. They all can't be right. There's only one way to heaven. And that's through the capital L, Lord Jesus Christ. The one that's mentioned in God's perfect written word. And you're just sit there going, huh? I did study on uh, video games are bad. I had some people saying, amen, amen. You look at their channel, they've got videos of video games. And I'm sitting there going, wait, wait, you just said amen to a study I did about sin and against sin and pointing out video games as being sin, and you're amen in me. 
What's going on here, brothers and sisters of Christ? You've got people that are denying the Word of God, and the Jesus they profess is not found in Scripture. And when you try to show them the Jesus Christ found in Scripture, they end up denying Him. Just flat out denying Him. Why? Because they deny the Word. They deny the lowercase w word, they're going to deny the capital W word. Turn to Acts chapter 2, 1. I just want to bring this in. Peter did get converted. He ended up denying Jesus Christ. He ended up denying the sign that proved the gospel, that proved who Jesus was. But uh, Paul did, Peter, Peter did get saved. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Remember what we talked about in other studies, brothers and sisters of Christ. You cannot see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is surrounded by the glory of the Lord. And what does the glory of the Lord manifest itself as? When we did the study... Fire, clouds, and light. Bright light. You can see the glory of the Lord through Jesus Christ. There's fire in the Old Testament, the tabernacle. Fire by night, cloud by day. The glory of the Lord. That's what this is. The glory of the Lord is surrounding the Holy Spirit because they have to see a sign. This is like the Jewish people. They're still talking to the Jewish people. But I just want to bring that up again because people always keep thinking that they actually see the Holy Ghost. You can't see the Holy Ghost. They saw the glory of the Lord. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And you go down and it talks about how they speak in other people's languages and they're like, hey, he's speaking in my language. That's what the tongues are there. Okay. Uh, uh, Galatians, uh, verse 8 says, and how, and how here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. There were known languages that they were speaking, not just heavenly gibberish. But we see there, Peter did get converted. God said, when you are converted, Jesus knew Peter's heart. Okay, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. How did Peter act when he heard it was Jesus on the shore? He didn't bother to get dressed completely. He just wrapped it around his waist and dove into the water. God knew Jesus, Peter's heart. God knows your heart. He knows my heart. Okay. But seek and ye shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Remember what we read. If the gospel be hid, it's hid to them who are lost. Why? Because they're not seeking it. They're not knocking on the door, okay? They're not saying, Lord, show me the truth. I want to know the truth. They love the lie that they've been given, these false Jesus that they get to believe in. They can have the world and be a Christian. These people that just want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Why don't they get saved? Well, if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them. They're lost. You try to explain it to them, they just don't get it. We try to explain the plan of salvation to these people, the easy believers and people. They don't get it. Why? Because they don't want to get it. They're not going to knock on the door. Peter didn't have that attitude. He was just overly zealous in the wrong area, fleshly. And it got in the way. The things that be of men got in the way. He ended up denying the word of God and in turn denied Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. We'll say it again. But if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the mind of them who have believed not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Who's the lowercase g God of this world? Satan. What did Jesus warn Peter with? That Satan's going to try to get to him? But he prays his faith stays strong. Stand for the word from now on. Stand for the word from now on. Don't back down. Don't compromise. But the people who don't believe, what happened? Satan, he's pulled them away from the word of God. Yea, if God said. Peter was warned about Satan. The one reason people will not seek out the true gospel, they savor the things that be of men. The flesh, the way of the world, they savor the things that be of men. The number one reason people, the other thing I got to get out of my, uh, I'm going to get out of my language, is 
People always say self-righteousness. Chapter and verse where it uses the term self-righteousness. You can have your own righteousness, which isn't good, and it'll send you to hell. It's nowhere. The Bible says they go about to a seeking to establish their own righteousness. They're working their whole life trying to establish their own righteousness. Okay? And they'll never find it. They'll never achieve it. And they'll have to stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne and answer for their life, just like we will, but the only difference is we're no longer under the law of sin and death. We don't go to hell. We answer for our life as a Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. They answer for their life at the great white throne. What's the difference? When it comes time for judgment, Jesus says, you're one of mine. Is his name in the book of life? Yep. You're one of mine. At the great white throne, depart from me, curse in an everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I never knew you. That's the difference. And people think as a Christian, you don't have to answer for your life. Whole another study. But we see there that they say the things that be of men, the flesh, the ways of the world. That's why people don't want to get saved. They don't want to know the truth. You try to preach the truth today, when I try to talk truth to people, they turn and run. When I try to preach the word, they turn and run. When I try to preach the word to people online, I, I just so much as link the gospel message and people flip out. It's like they go mentally insane. I've heard of people talking bad about me behind my back. That's between them and God. All but once, because all I did was link the gospel message to somebody. Who I was like, oh, there's some red flags there. You got video games on, you got video game videos on your channel, and you're getting at Brother Brian for getting prideful in a video where he's kicking your sin and kicking, you know, satanic style music, worldly music, and video games, and you're attacking Brian for attacking your sin, and I link the gospel message, and it says saying, Amen, that's the gospel message I got saved off of. They flip out, and you see a lot of bitterness and hatred in them. Just complete bitterness and hatred. Why is it? Because they love the flesh. They've been fed this lie by Satan that you can have this world and be a Christian. You can keep your sin after salvation. You don't have to listen to God's word. You can deny God's word and just go about living however you want to live and just say, I believe in the big guy upstairs and that justifies your salvation and you get to go to heaven. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you can believe in vain. And I, I'm, I, I believe with all my heart, brothers and sisters Christ, there's going to be people standing at the judgment seat of Christ that are going to sit there and say, but I believe that you are Jesus, the Son of God. I believe it, I believe it. Depart from me, you curse it, and everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels. Oh yeah, but I made the statement that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but your life didn't reflect it. Depart from me, you curse it, and everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels. You say one thing and do another. They profess that they know God. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but in works they deny him. There's going to be a lot of people, I believe, going to be standing there, but, 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 Depart from me, your curse, and everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. I want to read Revelation 3, 8 one more time. Okay, brothers and sisters, Christ, be very, very careful who you watch, who you follow online. Be very careful with your own personal walk with the Lord that you don't get deceived into trying to add to God's word, subtract it from God's word, go to the Hebrew group, Greek, goop, that's just goop, uh, Greek, get that out of your life. Okay? Don't fall for it. Don't get people pulling you away. There's people who once stood for the true plan of salvation. Now we see them off making videos and they're standing with people that attack the true plan of salvation. They deny God's word. What are they doing? They're denying the real Jesus Christ. When you start denying the word of God. When your life becomes a mess and you fall back into sin. Okay, you start justifying your sin. What are you doing? You're denying Jesus Christ. You deny the word. You deny the word. So the whole point of the study. Revelation 3, 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Remember we read over there about knocking, seeking. Knock and the door will be open. And no man can shut it. That net, that fish net, nothing's going to, it doesn't break. When you caught, when God catches you, that net doesn't break. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name, capital W, word. 
That's the key, brothers and sisters in Christ. That whole thing about Peter, that's the whole thing that God's trying to drive home with us. You deny the word, you deny the word. Capital W word. You stand by the word, you're going to wind up standing by the real Jesus Christ. The capital W word. I mean, I don't know if I can say anything else to make it and try to drive it home. So, got a little heated. I'm just frustrated with how many people are falling away. Jesus said it's going to happen, so I'm not going to look at Jesus and say, it Be far from me, Lord, it will not happen. We Bible-believing Christian men and women, we're going to stand strong. I'm not going to do that. I'm too, I mean, I'm not that, I fear God. I trust His Word. He said it's going to happen, but it still doesn't mean it doesn't grieve my heart like it grieved Paul's heart, and he's warning people night and day with tears. It still grieves my heart. Every time I see a, someone I believe that is saved fall away, they go back to the world. They'll never truly fit in. They'll make a mess of their life. Just totally make a mess of their life. They've destroyed their fellowship with the brethren. The Bible says, treat him as a lost person. He's to be as a heathen and a publican. Okay? You've gone to him. Before two or three witnesses have gone to him, the church has gone to him. At that point, he's to be as a heathen and a publican. He's destroyed his fellowship with the brethren, he or she, because they've chosen sin over the Word of God. And I'm talking about people who are saved. Okay, We're seeing a lot of false converts that, yeah, it grieves my heart too, to see all these false converts because, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you have somebody, the two things they want to hear more than anything they want to hear that they're a good person, and they want to hear that they're a sister or brother in Christ. And when they're false, and they're on their way to hell, because they're worshiping a false Jesus, they have worldly sorrow, and they refuse to have godly sorrow, the worst thing you can do is pat them on the back and say that they're a good person, and that they're a sister or brother in Christ. And all these false converts, we try to reach them, we try to preach the gospel to them, and the true plan of salvation that includes the gospel, and they want nothing to do with the capital L Lord Jesus Christ. They want nothing to do with the real Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh. They love their worldly life. They love their flesh. They savor the things that be of men above the things that be of God. And it grieves my heart. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we're just in the last days and we just got to do our best. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, we need to be getting, we're called into the ministry of reconciliation. I got the three orders, but those who are asking, I've got three orders that I'm going to try to get the gospel tracts out in the next few days. Um, but uh, we just need to get out there and keep preaching the word. Okay, we need to keep preaching the true plan of salvation. We need to get that last soul saved. We need to make sure that we're not falling flat on our face when Jesus Christ comes back to call us home. We need to make sure that we're standing for this book with the life that we're living. Okay. So with much as much as I can muster, um, you know, just grace and peace, brothers and sisters. Grace and peace be unto you. Stay in the Word of God. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, that we find through His Word. Okay. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.